to call <coughs> the East Brady Mine Township Board of Supervisors AM meeting this Thursday, October 5th, 2023. A uh, reminder that a recording device will be in use during the meeting. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public comment for agenda items. Rules of conduct, rules for conduct of public meetings established by Resolution 20. 01-08 state that the time allocated to each individual making a comment shall be three minutes unless otherwise set by the presiding officer. Additional public comment may be granted at the direction of the presiding officer at the conclusion of the meeting. I've historically used three minutes as the cutoff and we'll stick to that under the public comments. Are there any public comments? Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I come before you on behalf of LNR. I received yesterday a copy of the resolution from your solicitor, and there are a couple of things that I want to bring to your attention to correct some errors in the resolution and some misconceptions, and then I leave it, of course, to the board to exercise its judgment. First, there are references to the first two cases on the resolution, and they're not identified. They are the jury of view cases. That is the $6 million plus in damages that BVA waived in consideration in the settlement agreement. Those cases just don't magically disappear. Those damages just don't go away magically, even though your solicitor fails to address them. Secondly, I want to talk about the Carlino plan because there are numerous references in the resolution to all this terrible damage that's being done to the plan by the settlement agreement. It's not true. The settlement agreement, first of all, reached out to Carlino to join and resolve all the litigation, and they chose not to. That's their right. But the agreement itself says, your resolution says the road is relocated. It is not. That's a, a, a Carlino trope that isn't true. If you look at the settlement agreement, there's no relocation of the road. All the settlement agreement says is that the access in the BVA, the curve that is dangerous, needs to be corrected. It has nothing to do with your road reaching North Guthriesville. Wholly separate matter. And in fact, we designed it for them at the last land use hearing. We gave them an engineering plan for correcting it. Uh, the HOP. You know, you have this premise somehow that this plan, development plan, is cast in stone and can't be corrected or changed. The problem is they don't meet the terms of your original approval. You have an HOP that's pending that your resolution references as you being a party to, you're not a party in it. And the HOP is pending and has been pending now for two years, awaiting the Secretary of Transportation to ultimately make a decision. And the Secretary is not making a decision because what's pending is a property board matter that in my opinion, and I'm, you, know, you know what they say about opinions, in my opinion, Carlino's going to lose that. Because Carlino, and here's the thing you don't know, and your solicitor may not know because you haven't attended the Board of Property Matters, and that is that Carlino has stipulated, stipulated as a matter of fact in the case, that the, H, that the area of the Gore is owned by BVA. Stipulated. Now, your problem with that is that constitutes a violation of your approval. Your approval says that they have to comply with all of your ordinances, and that includes the obligation to own all of the land that they propose to develop. So 
I submit you wrap up your, your past your three sure. minutes. Sure. <coughs> you know, you've already filed an action. It's pending. Why do you need another resolution and another action? You stayed the one that's pending. So you already have this issue before the court. Why do you need another lawsuit? And this lawsuit, I want you to know, you have no protection, you have no insurance, and you are all individually subject to being sued for it. This is a willful, intentional breach of a contract, a valid binding contract. And I urge you not to do this. Let the courts play out with all the cases that are presently pending and resolve the matter. Otherwise, we all just devolve down into the pit. Um, and the only other thing I point out to you is if you're looking for somebody to punish, don't punish BVA. If you want to punish somebody, look at the difference between your development agreement that you signed and the original approval that you granted to Carlino. And you will find that the measure of damages of the amount of money that Township is to receive is different. Somebody, in drafting your development agreement, cut the amount of money that Carlino is obligated to pay you and cut it substantially. So you have a developer agreement you signed that gives Carlino a break, a dramatic break far in excess of what the order was in June of 2019. Take a look at that before you decide that you, the one you need to punish is the only one who tried to settle and get out of this litigation. I submit to your judgment and reason and ask only that you do that, that you exercise judgment and reason. Thank you. Good morning to the board. My name is Pamela Tobin. I represent Carlino. I commend the board for taking the step of considering this resolution. That resolution lists eight lawsuits. Seven of those lawsuits were brought by Mr. Prince on behalf of BVA to stop Carlino's development. The last lawsuit Carlino was compelled to bring in order to invalidate that settlement agreement, that quote settlement agreement. That settlement agreement, which I asked Mr. Prince to give me a copy of before the meeting, and he refused to do. At that board meeting, we learned that Mr. Prince alone drafted that document. We learned that Jason Winters alone met with Mr. Prince, even though the lawyers at the time told him he should not meet with Mr. Yeah, Prince without that's not true. counsel. Tobin. We learned at that meeting that the township solicitor, the township special matter. counsel, the um, supervisor elect Carl Croft, the former supervisor Jay Fisher all told <clears throat> Mr. Winters and Mr. Sherback not to sign that document, and yet they remained defiant. We were aboard, they Pam. We, that you sued us before we signed it, Pam. Proper and we were sued before the that meeting. <laughs> ready to sign it. That document is invalid on its face. It destroys Carlino's court-affirmed development approvals, which under the statute the township cannot do. It requires this board to cooperate with Mr. Prince to prosecute his lawsuits against Carlino when Carlino has paid all the legal fees to get the township out of that litigation. And that document seeks to give Brandywine Village Associates favorable zoning relief without ever having submitted a plan for approval. That is illegal contract zoning. That document doesn't hold up on its face. And when Judge Griffith saw it, he said, I read it, and I saw that it brings litigation. And that's what we had to do. Carlino was therefore compelled to file this single lawsuit. Just this week, the trial court ruled that the township had no authority to give back or transfer condemned property to Mr. Prince's clients. That decision supports this resolution. BVA has lost everything by now. They've lost all the appeals of Carlino's development. They lost all of their four declaratory judgment actions against Carlino to stop the development. They lost their federal antitrust lawsuit against Carlino. 
they're coming to an end. There's only two administrative appeals that we're trying to work through. And once they're resolved, and I disagree with Mr. Prince wholeheartedly, although I agree with him on his uh, statement about opinions mean nothing, but <clears throat> those are lined up to, to uh, be resolved in Carlino's favor. BVA didn't put up any engineering testimony to support its appeal of the HOP. It didn't put up any real testimony about its gore. When he says we stipulated to the gore, we recognize that he claims that they revoked this fraction of right of way, which we disputed and PennDOT disputed, and we are comfortable that the board will see it our way. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, okay. Ms. Tobin, your client, his engineering firm, they're the ones who drafted and prepared all of the decoration of taking and all of the, all of the drawings and everything for, for this township to take a taxpayer's land for your project, correct? Um, Mr. Winters, I think that's completely irrelevant. It is, but you're saying the that, you know, that, that he drafted it, but you're, it's okay for you to draft minimal. it, but it's not okay fact, for another attorney to draft it. Excuse me, I'm talking, Ms. Tobin. Property. I'm trying to respond to your question. That it does not, doesn't mean anything, but I'm asking you a question. Why is it okay for Mr. Prince to draft something not okay for him, but okay for you two? Why is, what's, what's the difference? One was a settlement agreement that eviscerated court-affirmed court approvals that represents illegal contract zoning. The only thing that was done in connection with the condemnation is an engineer prepared the legal description of the properties that were taken, which Correct. was a fraction of frontage, which was two easements and then a 1.9 acre parcel. Yes. That's what was taken for a road, and that is not comparable to a settlement agreement that eviscerates court affirmed approvals and represents illegal contract zoning. You should have been Mr. representing Mr. Winters when you drafted that document with Mr. Prince. I actually was we a special counsel, Ms. Tobin. Thank you. Well, according to the board minutes, special counsel recommended that you not enter into that agreement. <clears throat> no, that was actually our solicitor. He wasn't, had nothing to do with the actual the settlement agreement because he had a conflict of interest and he recused himself. Well, Mr. Leniak told me just the opposite. So. If there are any further questions, thank, thank you. you. Mr. Chairman, I rise as a personal matter just to correct the record, not argue law or anything else, but to correct the record on a factual matter. A, I didn't draft it, and the correspondence, if we would ever get to the 310 action, would confirm that I didn't draft it. Major changes were made by the township in the original draft, and the ultimate draft was actually prepared by the township. And number two, I wasn't the only one there. I wasn't the only one representing my client. At various times, Gene Orlando was there as well. And, and there were multiple representatives from the township there at various times, not just Jason Winters. Kyle Schreiber was there on one occasion. Your current manager was there, I think, almost every session of negotiation. So uh, just that's the fact of what actually occurred Can you repeat in those that? negotiations. Can you repeat that one, one last sentence? Repeat your last sentence. The last sentence was, I said that your township manager was there for every session. Every session. And you're on record saying that? He was there, to my knowledge, for every session, to your knowledge, every negotiating to your knowledge, session. To your knowledge. He was there every session that I was there, Just so far right as there. I remember. To your and you were there once. To your knowledge. To my knowledge. Correct. Yeah. Do you deny you were there once? Uh, I'll, I'll acknowledge on the record that there was meetings that occurred without my invitation. Yes, I'll acknowledge that. <laughs> You're, he was invited to every meeting. He decided not Thank to you. show up. So, Mr. Tobin, you have any rebuttal? No. Any other public comment? Okay, you have in your packet minutes of the previous meeting. Anybody have any changes? I have none. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. second it. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> Authorization to pay bills and approve payroll before we make the motion. There's one check I would like to 
exclude from the package, and it's uh, from the uh, traffic impact account, the check number 102, until I can verify what the, what the services were for. Other than that, I've reviewed the checks, and I have no other changes. Anybody else have any comments or no. questions? Is there a motion to authorize the payment of the bills and approval of payroll? So moved. I'll second it. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And <clears throat> item four, author, uh, item five, is there any old business? Word? <coughs> any subdivision or zoning applications before the board? And number eight is ordinances and resolutions for consideration. A resolution eight of 2023, a resolution repudiating and declaring void and unenforceable that certain undated agreement titled settlement agreement approved at a public meeting on December 16th, 2021. Mr. Esty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You have before you, as you just indicated, proposed resolution number eight of 2023. The title you read summarizes the uh, purpose and the content of the resolution. I will add that the settlement agreement that's referenced in the resolution was approved at a public meeting on December 16, 2021 of the Board of Supervisors, and that agreement is buying between East Brandywine Township, l &R Partnership, John R. Cropper, and Brandywine Village Associates. Uh, I provided notice to all of the legal counsel representing the various parties in this matter that this item would be on the agenda this morning. I advised them of that, I believe, this past Monday morning. Uh, I also provided a copy of the resolution before you to all counsel yesterday around 12 o'clock noon. I'm not going to read this word for word since it goes on for four pages, but I will summarize it to the best of my ability. There are several background paragraphs, the first one being a recitation of various lawsuits uh, that, the part, that the township, BVA, Cropper, l &R, and Carlino, East Brandywine LP, which is the owner of the property subject of the proposed giant shopping center, which we're all familiar with. There are eight lawsuits uh, cited in that uh, whereas paragraph, some of which, frankly, have already been resolved by the courts, and some of which have been withdrawn, but nevertheless, uh, they are recited as litigation pending or resolved. Secondly, the second whereas paragraph recites what I just said, that those parties are uh, parties to those litigations and including also the giant company, which is party to at least one of the recited litigations. And then it indicates that Jason Winters, George Sherbach, and Kyle Scribner were the incumbent supervisors of East Brandywine Township in calendar year 2021. Sherbach's term of office ended on January 2nd, 2022. The four-year term of Carl Croft began on January 3rd, 2022. The incumbent members of the board presently in 2023 are Carl Croft, Chairman Kyle Scribner, Vice Chairman, and Jason R. Winters, member. The, the next whereas paragraph indicates that the settlement agreement was uh, adopted by a two-to-one vote uh, on December 16th, 2021 with just 15 days left in the term of Sherbach. Sherbach and Winters voted in favor of the settlement agreement and Kyle Scribner voted against it. So it was by a two to one vote, the township approved the settlement agreement. Next, uh, the settlement agreement purports to settle uh, some or all the litigation matters which were recited in this agreement and in fact, some other litigation matters that aren't listed. Uh, the settlement agreement requires the township to perform certain governmental functions 
including actions which will have the effect of adversely affecting or preventing Carlino's development of the Giants Shopping Center in accordance with final approvals. It repudiates or attempts to repudiate a highway occupancy permit necessary for the Giant development. It requires the township to take certain actions related to a federal antitrust action. It requires certain zoning concessions and land development approvals and a sign approval for the benefit of BVA, Cropper, or LNR, granting certain concessions and waivers to BVA, Cropper, and LNR on future land development review and impact fees and requires relocation of future public road connecting Horseshoe Pike and North Guthriesville Road, which is to be constructed as part of the Carlino development of the Giant Shopping Center. Next, it indicates that on April 11, 2022, the Court of Common Pleas of Chester County issued a preliminary injunction uh, declaring the settlement agreement invalid and directing the township to unwind, rescind, or withdraw from any and all steps taken to implement the settlement agreement. On appeal by the adjacent landowners, those being BVA, LNR, and Cropper, the Commonwealth Court of Pennsylvania vacated the preliminary injunction and remanded the case to the Court of Common Pleas to again consider Carlina's request for an injunction based upon the record as currently constituted in that action. The Court of Common Pleas of Chester County, as of the date of this resolution, has not taken action on the preliminary injunction request on remand. Because the injunction was in effect from April 11, 2022 until July 11, 2023, the township did not take any action purportedly required by the settlement and agreement and did not heretofore take any action to repudiate the settlement agreement. The settlement agreement purports to be a contract that requires the township to make certain zoning concessions and to grant zoning and land development approvals to properties owned by the adjacent landowners and purports to settle zoning matters without the filing of plans or applications without court approval. The settlement agreement exposes the township to claims for injunctive relief and monetary damages, including but not limited to those claims set forth in the injunction action filed by Carlino East Brandywine. Whereas Carl R. Croft and Kyle P. Scribner, constituting a majority of the 2023 Board of Supervisors, did not approve the settlement agreement and do not agree to any of the terms and conditions of the settlement agreement. Be it resolved, one, the 2023 Board of Supervisors, as, as the duly elected governing body of East Brandywine Township, and on behalf of itself and East Brandywine Township, its elected and appointed officers and officials, employees, consultants, and contractors, hereby repudiates, rejects, and declares void, unenforceable, and without legal effect in its entirety, the settlement agreement, as a governmental contract not binding on the 2023 Board of Supervisors and East Brandywine Township, as illegal contract zoning, as the settlement of zoning and land development matters not pending before the township and without court approval, and as illegal and void in violation of law. Two, to the extent any action has been taken by the township in furtherance of the settlement agreement, the Board of Supervisors, Township Manager, Township Secretary, Township Solicitor, and all township officers, employees, consultants, and contractors are hereby directed and authorized to take all action necessary and execute all documents and agreements necessary to repudiate and void any such action. Three, this resolution shall take effect immediately upon its adoption, resolved and adopted. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the, uh, well, we need a motion first. I'll make a motion to adopt a resolution eight, eight of 2023. I'll second. I'd like to make and, a comment. And, now we're open for discussion, Jason. I'd like to know why. Uh, why are you doing this? Why the resolution? When I was at the administrative conference two weeks ago, 
and Rye Heard. Ms. Tobin agreed to stay the matters. Mr. Estes agreed to stay the matters. All parties there agreed to stay the matters to allow the, the new judge assigned to the case to start doing the scheduling of the cases. I, I don't know why we're doing this. The only thing I can think of is that this was requested by Carlino so they could add it to their amended complaints for their damages. Um, at that administrative conference, they both had uh, mentioned that I think Ms. Tobin filed the day before a petition for leave to amend their complaint, and Giant's attorney had mentioned that they were uh, thinking about doing that. So other than helping their amended complaint, I don't know how this helps the residents. Uh, we have no coverage for this. We, have, we don't have any security from Carlino. We have a $250,000 letter of credit for personal liability to us from a, the wrongdoing by a supervisor. Um, this, we're not judges. It's before a judge right now. I don't see how and what or what this does anything for our residents besides put them at risk because, again, it's intentional breach of a contract. Uh, whether George was here for only 15 days left in his term or whether you're going to bind a board, you know, every decision from a supervisor binds a board to a certain extent. You know, you're going to bind the future board by this decision in 60 days. And you're you're buying the, the, the new board. So by this resolution to try to get out of the old board that, quote, binded this board, it, it makes zero sense to me. It makes zero sense for why we should do this and put the residents in more liability. There's going to be more lawsuits when we could just table this, not do anything like we advised the attorneys that we we're uh, the judge that we were okay with, and we just let the judge decide. It's not gonna not gonna affect anything. This doesn't do anything for the township. So I'd like to know why you want to do this. I mean, <laughs> you weren't the supervisors back then, uh, Mr. Croft, and uh, you know, unfortunately. As supervisor, you can do the best you can, make the best decisions possible for the residents. And unfortunately, you know, it doesn't help when you're under duress when you're being threatened to be sued for possibly taking a vote. In fact, I was sued by a billion dollar corporation before we took a vote, before that meeting, just to try to scare us to not do it. And most people would, would not have voted to settle litigation at, under that kind of circumstances of being sued. And, um, and we did because that's what we thought was best. So I think this resolution has a lot of mistakes. I think that it does nothing for our residents besides add more lawsuits. I just, I'd like to know why we, what, what's your reasoning, Mr. Estes? Um, Carl, what do you, would you like, why are you, uh, is this even on the agenda? I didn't even know anything about this. Um, this wasn't a board decision for any direction. This was Mr. Estes and Mr. Croft and Mr. Uh, Revan here it wasn't the Board of Supervisors for this resolution. Mr. Chairman, may I respond briefly? Yes. I think uh, Supervisor Winters indicated that uh, he asked, was this resolution requested by Giant? I can assure you that I've never spoken to anyone representing Giant, never spoken to a principal of Giant. I believe the first time I ever met anyone related to the Giant Corporation was when we attended the administrative court last week. Her, their counsel was present for Giant and introduced themselves to me. My perspective, no one from Giant requested it. The question was, did anyone from Carlino East Branding Line request the of this resolution? I can say no one asked me to do that. I can only speak for myself. No one from Carlino East Branding Line or their legal counsel asked me to draft this resolution. Secondly, the statement Mr. Winters made about the stay is absolutely incorrect. Parties at the administrative conference agreed that the court should stay one action, and that 
is the action where BVA and L&R appealed the adoption of a resolution last year by this board. That was the only action that we have. Proof is what happened a couple days ago, which Tobin alluded to. The court actually entered a decision in another one of the cases the day before yesterday. So that indicates the court doesn't believe everything was stayed. As I said, there's only one action. All agree that the court could stay it. We didn't get any order that says it was stayed. That would prevent the court from taking action. Third, the reasons for doing this are recited in the resolution. My opinion is that the settlement agreement is an illegal agreement for all the reasons that were already stated on more than one occasion. It's illegal contract zoning. It's an illegal governmental contract. It has the effect of undermining Arlino East Brandywine's land development approval, and those are the reasons I recommend it to the board. Some of it results from the fact that the injunction that was in place that declared the agreement void was vacated. So my recommendation to the Board of Supervisors, it is time for us, for the board rather, to take action to acknowledge the illegality of the settlement agreement. Can I speak? Mr. Estes, so you're the judge now? I am not the judge. You're the judge. My job is to give legal advice. And did you share with anyone, the board, did you share that recent decision? Because I haven't seen a copy of it. Well, the, pardon me? Have you shared with the board this recent decision last week that you said was the reason behind this? I believe I forwarded it to the township manager. No, I did not see it. Well, did you see it? My, my, my. Excuse me, Tom, I'm speaking. I'm sorry. Tom, Tom, did you receive this lawsuit from last week? Some kind of. I don't answer to you, Jason. You don't answer to me? So you're a board member. You don't want to answer your fellow board member? This is what this is about. You know, this is all, this is about residents. This is about a little power struggle between the board because Kyle doesn't want something to go forward, I guess, because now you don't want to talk to me. All right, all right. So I'd like to know a simple question. Kyle, did you receive an email? So let me, since you just said. You can't. Since I, you pointed something out. Carl, did you receive that lawsuit last week? I want to clarify for the record that I have no skin in the game. I have had zero relationship with either party in this. I've been here, one of the longest tenured supervisors of the three of us. Kyle, you tried to rig the election, okay? You talked earlier about being sued personally. I've been sued. I've been sued personally during this process as well. Sometimes as a supervisor in your official capacity, you have to make decisions that you believe is right for the taxpayers. Yes, and I did that. You made your decision based off of that. I make my decision based off of that. But you're not a judge, though. Thank you. You're not a judge either, though, Kyle. This is in my official capacity. You make decisions sometimes that you believe are fair and balanced, and you deal with the consequences later. This is exactly what I'm doing. You made your decisions, too. I asked you a simple question. I don't have to answer your questions. Carl, did you receive the lawsuit? I didn't receive the lawsuit. I would like to ask Luke a question. No, Jason. I'm a board member. I'd like to ask a question. I have the floor now. You don't. No, actually, I'd like to speak for a second. No. I'd like to answer my question. No, I'm going to answer your question if you stop interrupting me. So you did receive it or you didn't? I just have a question. Jason, I'm going to ask you to leave if you're going to continue to interrupt me. Go ahead, Carl. I'm telling you. Ask me to leave, Carl. I did not receive any lawsuit, per se. I may or may not have had a phone call. I do remember being asked whether or not we should consider what happened, what our next steps should be after the administrative conference. So you did that without the board. You did that as the chairman. The chairman of the board. So you made a decision how to move forward. Jason, if you don't let me complete, I will have you removed. Okay, Carl. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
what their thoughts were and if they have any objections to it being placed on the agenda that is the normal process is this how it happened because I follow interrupt me one more time I don't know why you keep I'm saying it didn't happen it did happen because I know you were called a text message saying a text message from our solicitor saying this is in your email this is what's going to happen Thursday isn't a discussion I was under the impression he no called you and I I I asked Mr. Esty our solicitor if he contacted I did probably use the word contacted both of you and then he explained it to me and I okayed it to be on the agenda which you previously said I agree with that but the right so the mechanism how it got there that so it wasn't accurate though it is accurate so there's never discussion just so everybody knows so the it's published to the supervisors as a courtesy Friday afternoon which it was we've been doing that for eons Monday it's published to the public it was published late afternoon before the close of business on Monday and I still heard nothing from you complaining until yesterday well I wasn't going to bother you over the weekend but did anybody reach out to our insurance carrier and say is this covered all right so as far as I know everything was followed and I I agree with the solicitor's decision that we should repudiate it and that is based on the fact that the judicial system as slow as it moves is forward forward and when they and until you have the next hearing for it either a temporary or a permanent injunction we need to protect the township and repudiate agreement that in my opinion grossly unlawful and I second your motion has anyone ever contacted our insurance carrier and said we're gonna you know intentionally breach a settlement contract who's intentionally breaching anything you are Tom said earlier in our executive session that if you guys go through this it's an intentional breach so I'd like to know if you guys have contacted your insurance carrier where you just before you take a vote I think that's good business good practice for the residents that's I'm happy for your opinion so you don't want to check with our insurance carrier for the residents you'd rather just go through the resolution before a judge decides that's before a judge right now I think we should call our insurance carrier because I spoke to my attorney last night and he had concerns I believe he reached out to mr. Estes to see if he would table this had did he did he get in touch with you mr. Estes he sent me a text message after you gave him my mobile number yes and I immediately called him back in my car on my way to the township for another I did speak with him and was he did he ask you to table this so the insurance carriers can take a look at it he he indicated to me that you asked him to call me that we might table it but he couldn't provide any substantive reason why the board should do that because we're not covered he cannot make decisions on coverage you can't I understand that but Matt Anderson yesterday spoke to me can't make those decisions Matt Anderson from Chatham I would know that that you were sued personally by Carlino and Spaney on your injunction action yes I was you were provided coverage correct but this is an intentional action this is an intentional breach of a contract that was already notarized the breach of a contract it's a repudiation of an illegal con does that mean that it's void if the board passes the resolution from the township's perspective it is void okay no further questions or comments all right I call the question I've already made a motion that's been seconded so all those in favor say aye aye no all those opposed okay so resolution 8 of 2023 is approved two to one vote any public comment on non agenda items good morning everyone would you put your foundation hats on for a minute and it just happens that we have two other foundation members here 
I wanted to let you know that I did get my check from AXA for $6,000, and I'd like just to let you know that I will soon be spending it. And um, all good news. Any questions? I have none. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment on non-agenda items? Under notices, an executive session will follow this meeting to discuss personnel meeting uh, matters. And this morning, uh, October 5th, there was an executive committee meeting to discuss legal matters. Do I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all.